Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on my program. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you are joining me from any part of the world, I thank you very much for your contributions on this channel. Please kindly subscribe if you have not subscribed and also click the notification bell so that you will be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. In this channel, I bring information to your doorstep. I bring news from all channels, from every angle. Things that have to do about the world, things that have to do about Africa, more especially Nigeria. I bring it to your doorstep. Some informations that you ignore, some information that you cannot be able to come across. I look for them, I bring it to your doorstep for you to see. Every video you see on this channel is for educational purposes. About the tech ecosystem, a lot of people argue with you that there was something called Ideas Hub set up by the federal government, a federal government tech hub before this administration. There was also a certain Omobola Johnson that was before this administration that opened up the tech ecosystem. So just because of balance, let's get the empirical facts right on ground. Secondly, your vice presidential candidate said something at the MBA conference. Your vice presidential candidate, Shatima, said that I will handle security and President Bola Tinubu, if elected, will handle economy. A lot of people have said that's a misnomer based on how the country works. Is it that your vice president is saying he's commander in chief? That the president is supposed to handle security and the vice president by the constitution is supposed to look at the economy and some other thing. What do you say about that? Secondly, you make strong arguments that the Buhari administration. Uh, can I finish, please? Mr. Can I finish? Mr. Can I finish? Hussaini. I'm still asking okay. a question, sir. Okay, please. finish. Finish. I'm listening for you. The second finish. question is you made strong arguments that the Buhari administration has done a lot. A lot of people say yes in terms of infrastructure and the likes. But how would you explain over 33% unemployment rate? How would you explain over 18% inflation rate? How would you explain the fact that we're using, we're borrowing to service our debt, over 119% debt to service ratio now? How would you explain that the CBI has printed close to 20 billion, I mean 20 trillion, 20 billion, I mean 20 trillion naira in ways and means? How would you explain Nigeria still getting a place on the Global Tourism Index? How would you explain the fact that cost of doing business has gone on the increase in Nigeria? How would you explain the fact that Nigeria still ranks low in the cost of doing business? These are some of the parameters people would like you to interrogate. Have you finished? Yes, I'm sir. asking Mr. Hussein, have you finished? Yes, sir. Well, that's your own interpretation. It ambition, capricious manifestation, and reaction formation. Okay, Senator so Miller, uh, just a point of correction. The PDP did not win the last election. The Supreme Court ruled that the APC won the last election. INEC returned it just for the sake of facts for our viewers out there. The PDP <laughs> lost the last election. Secondly, moving anyway, on. Moving on. We won uh, the election, and the election was rigged. The election uh, was Mr. Rigged. Miller, you don't have the facts. The PDP lost the last election, and that's the fact on ground. We right? have the facts that the election was moving rigged on. against the PDP. And the Supreme Court had ruled that the APC won that election. Moving on. Uh, I'd like to ask you for that. And you say you are coming to fix corruption. You're going to fix a lot of the things in the economy. People will argue that as of the 1st of May 2015, those were 28 days to your handing over to the APC. The power production dropped to 2,800 megawatts. You can go check it. Those are the facts on ground. Secondly, they say the PDP wants to fight corruption. And people talked about the Diazani scandal. They talked about the reportage of 20 billion and other billions of Naira missing. Since then, they've re returned goods and property worth hundreds of million from Diazani alone. Just one minister has served in the PDP's cabinet. So a lot of people are asking, what is the PDP coming to preach that is new after all the corruption and after all the lack of opportunities to grow this country? I want to tell you that in every developed nation of the world, there's still percentage of corruption. Even in the United States of America, every day corruption cases have been reported. But what I want to tell you is that Atiku Abubakar is coming to strengthen the fight against corruption. Because when the institution is stronger than individuals, then there will be no excuse to punish corruption. But today in this country, individuals are stronger than institutions. But Atiku Abubakar will make sure that institutions become stronger than individuals and the fight against corruption will be, a, there will be a robust improvement in the fight against corruption. And 
I mean, there will be severe punishment for corruption. I do not have the details of the Dezani um, situation, and they've been prosecuting that for close to eight years. We have not seen any massive results. I have not seen any, um, um, I mean, categorical uh, judgments to, to, to buttress that matter. But however, I want to tell you that this administration, there's improvement on daily basis. I mean, uh, there's evolution, positive evolution every day in the world. And what article is coming is to build on the successes of PDP in the yesteryears, which cannot be compared with the actually calamitous situation we have today. And I also want to say that as you have quoted the Supreme Court judgment in the case of Atiku Abubakar and Buhari from the last presidential election, Another judgment has been given by the APS court in the land, which is the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court just gave a, a, a ruling a few days ago that PDP, no part of this country was shortchanged and that uh, PDP committed no offense in uh, picking their presidential candidates from uh, the North. And I think agitators and media men like you should also draw a line since there's a Supreme Court judgment to that, uh, to that um, effect. Both Body George and uh, the Wiki uh, group should also exercise restraint from the position of South, 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 because the Supreme Court judgment was very, very clear. And we should use that to unify ourselves as a country and move ahead. So now you believe that the PDP lost the last election in the spirit of respecting the Supreme Court? I, I'm just saying that you have used the Supreme Court as your basis for evaluating the last election. I'm saying use also the last judgment of the Supreme Court to stop discussing frivolities and distractions and focus on the, um, uh, the programs and agenda of the PDP towards winning the next election. So we can both agree that the last election was lost by the PDP. Thank you so much, Mr. Miloy. Today, is that there is a process of Islamization going, coming on. This is what is doing. And when you see the attack from Benue Plateau down to the southeast, these are the hardcore strong areas of Christianity in the south of Nigeria. When they are demonized, when they are reduced in strength, ask me what are Nigeria people doing in the southeast? What is Nigeria doing in the southeast? People in the north have been warning me that we are talking about election. Something much more serious is coming. Because he woke up one morning and declared a state of emergency. His military is all, all over the place. His uh, henchmen have taken over the whole southeast. Our people will wake up and you don't, you don't even know where to run to. You won't remember that uh, Peter Obi or Atiku, anybody is running for presidency. He has a different agenda. This is why he's not interested in the killings in his country. Killings will be happening and he jumped into a plane to uh, travel abroad. Tinubu has not visited the southeast. Not in primary, before primary or after that. He's not interested. He said his uh, deputy, his vice presidential candidate, said that Peter Obi will be an Igbo, is an Igbo president, not a Nigerian president. What an utterance for people, somebody to make. He shows you the inner thinking against my people. Why must he say that Peter Obi will be an Igbo president? Why? Why makes that kind of statement public? This is a man who harbored and developed Boko Haram. Boko Haram leaders were caught at the state house of uh, Brown State in Abuja here. And nothing has happened. Nobody has questioned him. Well, he has denied that he harbored or he has anything. But the, the, did he deny that the person that EFCC did not arrest the person in his uh, lodge? He didn't deny that. He didn't deny that. The man, the government, the police in this country arrested the man in his lodge. Did he deny that? When the, the, the Boko Haram started when he was governor in, in, in Brown State, he should tell us how it started. Why up to today? It's not a good business in this country. That violence has spread everywhere. What will they use when campaign starts next month to tell Nigerians why we must vote for them? Records. Records help me. Every morning in the past five years when I wake up in the morning, there's a program on AIT. People they conduct a Catholic Mass. And after that, there's a, a program for 15 minutes called um, um, Light of the Nation. Mm. If you listen to that program, you'll be a better Nigerian whether you're a Catholic, an Anglican, a, a Muslim, it's been a point of duty for me to listen to that program. It motivates me spiritually to at least be honest to myself. And I say this in realization of the fact that 
people, especially in my region, in my zone, live on a lot of beliefs and passions, not factual truth. Until you remove passion from the facts, 